A quick note about our presenter, Bamak Shaw is our application security service lead here at Pivot Point Security. Uh, he's a certified information systems auditor and a certified ethical hacker, has delivered dozens of application ass assessments as well as uh, information security management assessments. Um, helping, uh, he really does help our, our clients understand and mitigate risk from their applications. Uh, we affectionately refer to him as the cherub of application security, mainly due to his angelic-like personality. Of course, uh, you could be the judge of that after you hear him speak. But uh, without further delay, uh, Bamek, the floor is yours. Feel free to take it away. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is the introductory webinar for the OWASP ESVS. And in today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, we'll basically start with the introduction of the OWASP ASVS. What is it? And you know, a lot of people uh, have not heard about the ASVS. So I thought maybe it's a good start, like you know, just to get the introduction. And then we'll also compare it with the other frameworks we have, such as like you know, application security frameworks like the OWASP Top 10 or SANS Top 25. So, so we we are gonna compare this ASVS, how it's beneficial than the uh, top 10, and and you know why does it make sense to adopt in the uh, in your organization. We'll also uh, do a deep dive into this ASVS testing level. So uh, there are there are multiple levels, and and we'll we'll figure it out like you know which level is right for you for your applications and based on your risk profile. So so we'll discuss about those things, and at the end we also talk about what are the next steps like you know how you can integrate the uh, how you can transition from the top 10 to the ASVS and and what are the benefits you can get from uh, having the ASVS assessment done on your application so uh, without further delay let's let's start you know talk about the uh, current application security frameworks we have and and why they are bad like you know what are the like disadvantages we have in the current security frameworks so uh, we all know like you know there are application security frameworks like top 10 is the most popular one and then we also have the sense and there are NIST frameworks as well uh, here and there like which supports the application security requirements but all of these frameworks have like you know a couple of uh, disadvantages and and that's why OWASP uh, itself has come up with a new framework uh, so so we're gonna uh, talk about the uh, disadvantages one by one so let's start with the risk base um, this framework uh, does not support the risk-based uh, environment and the reason I say that is you know every application is different so like you know if you look at this software you look at the every application enterprise application uh, everyone everyone has you know process certain amount of data they process different amount of data they store different amount of data their user interaction is different their environment is different and thus like you know it presents so much different risk to the organization now, if you look at the top 10, it provides you same set of test cases. No matter what is your application, it will give you, this is A1 to A10. This is the, you know, uh, all the test cases or, or these are all the security requirements that the OWASP has, but it does not change if your application, you know, stores or process PII data. Uh, so, so that's a big disadvantage and, and the reason is like, you know, application with no sensitive data, uh, for example, let's say online forum and application who stores critical data such as a banking application or let's say health, healthcare application which stores or processes the patient data and, you know, financial records. They, they should be treated differently. You know, uh, if you if you treat the same way, like your online forum and the, uh, and the banking application, then you're spending time and resources on non-critical areas now examples like you know uh, could be let's say uh, uh, you have a banking application and then you you want to make sure your api keys if you're using the rest apis or, or any apis you want to make sure your api keys are secure you want to make sure you do not have any sensitive data in your source code such as passwords right like but if you look at the online forums where it's just a, like you know a blogging site where someone can write a blog and someone can comment but so it does not require like you know all these checks but do you get the assistance from the top 10 like whether you should go with this or not which test cases you should cover or not it does not provide like you know not just the top 10 but any application security framework you look at will not provide you such details so uh, that that's the you know the big disadvantage we have uh, by the any existing application security frameworks uh, the second one we have is you know prescriptiveness so 
uh, top 10 will tell you, uh, for example, if you look at the first one, A1 injection attacks, it will tell you like, you know, test for all the injection vulnerabilities or the applications should implement any injection uh, controls. But does it, it does not tell you like what sort of injection test one should perform and how to how to perform. So for example, in the injection, we have like, you know, multiple injection, SQL injection, we have XML, we have LDAP injection, we have OS command injection, we have file injection. Now, based on the application, it should differ. Like, you know, if your application is having a, like, you know, file upload functionality, then you should test for the file injection. You should test for the OS command injection. But if your application is just, again, you know, going back to our initial example of an online forum, then, uh, you might not need to go through like you know a whole lot of things because it's not critical it's not you know it's not something you want to spend your time on to test on unnecessary tasks also the top 10 does not you know provide sort of a checklist like uh, if you take another example like an OWASP a6 security misconfiguration it's a very broad term it does not say what test cases you want to consider a misconfiguration someone like me could say okay weak password and server configuration could be part of this uh, checklist while the other tester would say okay i would also test for click jacking response header testing and you know uh, server configuration but i would not consider weak password in this one so top 10 does not provide like you know the organized or i would say checklist where you can get the consistent results every time no matter who is testing that's that's not going to happen with the top 10 or a sense top 25. uh the third problem we have is the develop developer or like you know developer buying and this is by far the biggest challenge we have in industry right now for any security assessment to be successful you need the developers buying and it's very much important not just you know you don't need developers just to prepare the environment or like you know provide the information you want but also you want to make sure they understand the importance of the security testing or security assessment we are going through and how to fix the any issues that came up after the testing now again like you know top 10 was built by the security researcher and analyst so they did not understand like you know how well like how to write a framework where developer can understand and it's it's written difficult language to be very honest and so the end result is not effective and as desired so if a developer will read through the top 10 it would not give them an idea if they want to test any particular requirement they will not get an idea how to fix particular you know uh, test or particular vulnerability by reading the top 10 it's not meant for the developer developers and the last one here we have is the flexibility and again in last couple of years what i've seen is various organization have been transitioning towards devops and then the agile process and you know now this we are since we are transitioning to devops and agile flexibility is a must and top 10 is not flexible enough to fit our needs because if you take an example, like, you know, earlier, earlier in the days where we were uh, sticking to our waterfall model, where we would push the code and, you know, deploy the application maybe once a year or maybe twice a year, it was easy because we had plenty of time to test the application and like, you know, go through the security test. Now in this one, where we are deploying, you know, maybe multiple times a month or, or sometimes you know, every week or maybe multiple times a week. So going through was top 10 testing, every time it's not flexible and it's impractical to be very honest and that's why everyone thinks like you know okay at this point security is optional we want to get our product to the you know consumer and and we don't want to waste our time on the security testing but it's not that like you know security is a must but it has to be flexible enough so you can fit in into your sdlc so these are uh, some uh, common problems we have with our existing security frameworks so we'll discuss, uh, you know, in the future slides, like how how the ESVS works and like, you know, how it resolves all of our issue. But let's start with the introduction of the ESVS. So what is the ESVS? So this ESVS is called Application Security Verification Standard, and it's built and managed by OWASP. This framework was mainly developed for the application security. 
but this is not limited to web application security like top 10 or any of the frameworks uh, the reason i said not limited to web applications uh, because this framework can effectively apply to any sort of system if you have a mobile applications this is perfect if you are using the rest apis it works you are using encryption it works if you are using internet of things like you are building iot devices this framework is perfect so it's not just built for uh, you know the uh, web applications or thick client application it works for any components uh, the second aspect of it is this is a risk based framework so what it does is it first evaluates what's the application risk so based on various criteria it determines uh, your application risk is x y and z and then based on the input it gives you the output how many test cases or what are the test cases that you should verify and what sort of controls you need to implement in your application to make it secure and make it compliant as a security based practices so it's it's really easy you provide the risk it spits out all the checklists that you need to go through and you implement those now again since this is like you know very comprehensive it works for any environment this has been consumed by various industry including like you know finance insurance manufacturing technology banking applications like nowadays i've seen like you know many many big organizations have gone through like the ai asvs and and you know adopting this standard over the top 10 because it because of its mainly comprehensiveness uh the other quick intro i would say uh, right now we have the asvs version 3.0 published by the OWASP. it's still growing uh, right now, I know they are working on version 3.1, which is in beta right now, and all the other things I told you about the like you know Internet of Things. So they are building all these requirements right now in the next version of ASVS. But in the current version, we have 19 functions, and this 19 functions. So some of this, uh, if I would say the example would be you know the first function we have is security architecture and threat modeling. The second function we have is authentication. The third function we have is authorization, then session management and so on. So they have divided all the components of a critical application security requirement into 19 functions. And then they have defined all the requirements within, the, within this. There are three levels of the ASVS, as we can see on the screen. Uh, so, uh, you can see four levels, but le le let's stick to the three levels for simplicity and then I'll explain what is the four level. So the first level is called opportunistic. So level one, two and three is actually defined by the OWASP itself with various requirements. And then we have the level zero, which is the bottom one. And that's for flexibility. And you can customize ESVS as per your needs. So for example, let's say, you read through the ESVS standard and framework and you saw, all right, neither level one, two or three fits our needs. What should we do? Then you have flexibility to create your own ESVS level, which is zero. And just to give you, you know, a, a really good example, we are here at PowerPoint Security based on the client demands and like, you know, VS client came to us and they said, ah, oh, we would like to stick to uh, level two, but like, you know, it's just too much. Can we can we create our own level and, and you know, do something about it? Or we want to do with level one, but it's just, you know, a uh, little too less. Can we expand it and, and create some other level between level one and two? So we have created other two levels, which is called, uh, we have called it as zero A and zero B. Now zero A, we have done it for like a quick analysis. So for example, if you have made some, changes to the application and now if you want to publish it probably let's say uh, in next day or two so you do not have enough time to go through the entire OWASP top 10 testing but with the zero a it provides you the quick analysis it gives you a quick uh, you know a peace of mind that okay whether your application is meeting the security best practices or not it takes less than like you know a day maybe a couple of hours based on the application size but and still gives you a good amount of coverage in your application security so you don't have to stick with you know level one and spend like uh, maybe a week doing the security testing you can create your own and then we have also created zero b 
which is somewhat mirrored to the top 10. But then uh, based on the client requirements, we have also incorporated some other requirements from level one, two and three to make it more practical and you know more uh, like more current because uh, top 10 does not include all the you know for example it does not include mobile testing requirements but if your application has pro mobile applications so how do you test it so we have like you know created this different levels based on the client needs uh, in the next like in the next slides we'll also talk about each level individually and we'll talk about how does it differ from the other levels but for now, let's let's see, you know, how the ASVS differs from the other frameworks we have of the application security. So the first uh, benefit we get uh, from the ASVS is it's very easy to use. And if you remember in the first slide, as I said, like, you know, the top 10 was built and managed by the security researcher. Now, ASVS is actually designed and developed by the developers. So I'm actually part of the ASVS Slack channel and you know every day I see developers talking and you know discussing uh, with each other on how to improve this framework how to build this framework and things like that so this is actually since it's actually developed by the developers it's written very easy to read and easy to understand language so if if a developer is going through this framework they'll be e easily be able to understand and hence they'll able to also integrate within the SDLC so you get the real benefit of like you know having the developers as well as the security tester working on the same framework uh, the next one we have is comprehensive so part of it i already talked about it because it's not limited itself with the web applications and you know it pretty much does everything it also provides you functionality on you know how to uh, securely architect like you know how to uh, do the configuration how to uh, configure your app server how to configure your cloud servers and uh, cloud environment and, and things like that so it provides all sort of guidelines and also it's very prescriptive uh, th there is there is one uh, uh, testing guide uh, that's called OAS testing guide uh, if I recall correctly on and, and you can you can just look it up on the OAS website so what the OAS testing guide does is it provides the step-by-step -step instructions for the developers and the tester on how to test particular vulnerability. And also it provides the guidance on how to fix the vulnerability. Now what ESVS has done is they have mapped this each and every requirement from the ESVS with the testing guide. So for example, if you are going through 1.1 of the ESVS requirement, you can click on the link and you can go to the testing guide 1.1. It will give you the step-by-step -step instruction how to test this, how to verify this requirement and how to implement any security controls. So for example, uh, you, you are on, on, you want to test your authentication. So there's a requirement in the ESVS to verify whether your uh, like, you know, login and password are secure enough or, or whether can someone do the brute force attack on your application or not. So ASVS has provided like you know mapping with the testing guide where it says how do you test for brute force and how do you protect against brute force. So it's it's very comprehensive, it's very prescriptive, it's very easy to understand in that way. Uh, the other benefit we get is it's very proactive. Uh, so you know, problem with the top ten is whenever you are performing any dynamic testing, you are doing it at the staging environment you know, when you are almost ready to go to the production, every every development is like, you know, development is pretty much done at that point. And now imagine what would happen if you find a critical vulnerability in your stage environment. Of course, you can't go to the production without fixing it, but fixing that vulnerability takes a whole lot of time. Like, you know, I, I, I do recall one time we were doing the top 10 testing and, and you know, we found a CSRF vulnerability in, in one of the application. And it was a large application. So what they had to do is developer had to go back on each and every application page. They had to insert that CSRF nonce and CSRF random token. Uh, if you like, you know, if you're aware of like what's a CSRF vulnerability, but yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a random token which you have to submit at every post request. So they had to do this for each and every page. And that actually delayed the production activity because 
it was whole lot of new new tasks like you know they have to go to start of the stlc and then kind of work through the entire code and then go back to the stage environment so it just took a lot of time now what asvs does is uh, there is a the first security function of the asvs is threat uh, threat modeling or like you know threat review so you can identify all of your applicable threats to your application at the start of the assessment or, or at the start of the stlc so you would know these are the security controls i need to implement in my applications in order to protect or in order to meet the compliance so since you already know what controls you need you would implement this csrf non so csrf random token on whenever you are creating a new functionality in your application so by the time you are at the stage environment you do wouldn't have to worry about all these controls basic controls so it, it, it's rather more proactive than you know just going back and forth within like requirements and fixing the issues because it just create a lot of time it wastes a lot of time and efforts now this framework is actually not just meant for the developers or tester as we talked about like you know it's easy to understand for developers and tester but also gives a really good guidelines to the architects like the security architects so for example if you want to uh, deploy your or you want to move to the cloud environment it really provides a good guidelines how you can make sure your environment is secure how do you make sure your system configuration are secure so it's it's meant for the architects in in a way then also for consumers like if i am a consumer or if i want to acquire uh, xyz product i would say okay uh, is this product compliant with the asvs conformance like you know is this product compliant with the asvs level one two or three based on stress profile if i'm gonna acquire a healthcare product i want to make sure it it can protect again or it can you know be uh, really steady against all the software risks we have in the today's environment so consumers can also use this uh, a framework to attest any application now there are multiple ways you can use this one but OASP has defined this three main objectives or this three easy to find way you can use this framework the first one is you can use it as a metric now uh, what it means is it provides the application developers and owners with the yastic to assess like you know how much trust they can put that can be placed in the web application so for example let's say you have a application and there are application you want to make sure it's compliant with the ASVS level one because that's the internal stakeholders or like you know top management requirement to sell the product so you can use it as a metric whether your application is compliant with the test level one, two or three or not. You can also use it as a guidelines, like, you know, security developers can use it, uh, can use a testing guide and ASVS as a guidelines, like how do I configure my uh, cloud environment? How do I configure my server? How do I uh, generate, you know, uh, encryption algorithm? How can I make sure what things I need to log? How how do i make sure like you know my file upload functionality are secure so so you can it it provides a lot of guidance on every part of the application and as we already talked like you know you can also use it during the procurement so during the procurement you can make sure application has gone through such asvs testing or asvs assessment and and it's compliant with all the requirements so uh, it's it it can be used by everyone in in you know certain ways and and you can you can figure it out okay what is the best suited way for you to use it now among all of this the really uh, cool thing about the asvs is it also provides the compliance mapping mapping so uh, nowadays i've seen like you know a lot of organizations have to be compliant with various standards like you look at the ISO, you look at the SOC and then you look at the HIPAA and, and there, there are just so much compliance requirements. So what ESVS has does is like, you know, they have a good set of requirements which matches or like some part of the requirement overlays with these compliance requirements. So for example, there is a cryptography requirement in the ISO standard and then there is a cryptography requirement in the ESVS as well. So if you are meeting cryptography of the ASVS, you are obviously meeting the ISO requirement as well. 
So if you are if you are planning to be in ISO compliance or if you are planning to be in any other compliance, you rather want to switch to ESVS than top 10 because it it reduces the time and effort you have to spend at the end. Like you know when you're when you really want to go with the any compliance. So it's it's a win-win situation because either way you are making your application secure and also you are making sure you are you are getting closer to any other compliance that you might have future need of. Now having talked about all of this we have got a good understanding but now let's talk about what are these different asvs levels so uh, let's start with the level one which is opportunistic now this level is appropriate for the apps which do not store or process sensitive data when i say sensitive data which means you know the pi data or any any uh, credit card information or, or, or information like that. So if your application is simple, like you know authentication and then uh, generating some processing data, generating reports and things like that, then this level is right for you. And this level is uh, at this level analysis is quick compared to other level because you know it only involves 15% of the manual testing because out of 100 odd requirements, I would say most of them can be covered during, using the automated tools. Like there are so many automated uh, professional scanners available or, or tools available, which you can use to test your application. Some part of it, like session management or authorization and access control, you have to still do it manually, but it's still uh, like very, very uh, minor components. Then, at this level, you know, it, it helps you to protect against threats, which are like, you know, uh, which requires very low effort to exploit, uh, so as we talked about, like brute force. Anyone with the uh, computer language, like, you know, minimal computer language can exploit the brute force. Like if if I'm, I'm, I'm someone who knows the uh, computer and, and know how to like, you know, do the web search and things like that, I can figure out a tool to perform a brute force attack. So at this level, you can easily control your application or easily protect your application against such threats. And attackers like you know script kiddie who does not have good understanding or they cannot like change the exploits or, or, or create their own exploits and things like that. You can protect against those attackers because they do not uh, have like you know deep understanding on your application architecture. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna take the ready-made exploits from the web search and they're gonna fire against your application. So you can protect against this one. What OASP has done is OASP has recommended level one as a minimum standard for all the applications. So if you go to the OASP SVS and, and read about the standard, they said, now going forward, level one should be minimum standard for all the applications because these are the bare minimum security requirement you should have in your application. So level one is pretty good. It gives you know a, a good comprehensive test compared to top 10 because it, it, there are a lot of requirements from top 10 which are being covered in the level one, but they've also included some additional requirements to make sure uh, as per the current environment, as per the current uh, web, like you know language, Angular and, and technologies, y your application is secure enough. Now let's talk about the level two. So this at uh, this level, it's it handles like you know it it's really suitable for the application which process sensitive data such as healthcare data, patient data, internal information like the PII data. This level provides the requirements you know to protect against most possible software risk in today's environment. So imagine any possible risk like out of 100 application, 95 applications are vulnerable to so and so risk. So if you are if your application is compliant against this to ASVS level, then you are protected against most of the software risk in today's environment. That's what the OASP you know uh, recommends at this level. Uh, level two is very comprehensive. As I said, like you know, it requires bulk of manual testing. So you know you can run few automated tests and you can covers some part of requirements, but 60% of the time you still require manual testing. And then it provides, you know, the control and guidance against threats and risk 
which can be exploited by the highly motivated and skilled attackers so i do recall there was an app where we were testing and and the risk was you know single user can pretty much scrap the entire database so database is very secure function like you know you don't want to uh, give an like access to someone of your database and and even though it's an authorized user because what asvs is, is recommending at this level is any secure function should be limited like you know access to any secure function it should be limited in time so if i am an authorized user to access your database but that access should be limited or you can limit the number of edits per hour by single user so you can limit the risk like you know you are not exposing your secure functions to your authorized user to do anything you want so it provides you know some extra level of security how to at level one it might say how to protect your database at level two it will say how to protect your database with the against the authorized users so level two is a little bit more advanced than level one in that way and then we have the last level which is the advanced level so this level is appropriate for the applications dealing with the sensitive data such as government secrets intellectual properties or credit card number etc as this is the last level of the asvs it has got all the requirements it has like 150 plus requirements and most of them requires the manual testing going through a level 3 takes a lot of time but uh, if your application is you know storing and processing such data i would say manual testing is your know, level 3 is the way to go because it, it provides like you know verification of your code configuration architecture logs uh, business logics and everything so it defends against high risk vulnerabilities and it also recommends like you know how to securely design your architecture uh, one of the example of this level is you know uh, you, you have to log the tls failures at the back end for future investigation or to ensure your source code or if you're using any third party libraries does not include any back doors or easter eggs or logic flaws so you know that there, there so many requirements and it requires so much manual testing but the good part is it has the mapping with the testing guide so you can go to the testing guide and read the steps how can i verify this you know whether my application is secure against this or not now having understand all of this let's discuss what are the practical next steps we have like you know how do you get started on the asvs so now you understood the asvs and why it's important and why it's better than top 10 so the first thing first you have to do is you have to review your asvs guidelines because that's where the OASP has recommended how you can uh, uh, like assess your application risk and it also guides you how to choose the appropriate asvs uh, level but just to simplify further because you know going through the entire documentation is real difficult like it's very time consuming so what we have done is we have developed a two minute quiz it's it's like an online tool which you would get in an email after after our webinar so after clicking on the link there'll be a, a some sort of quiz you give once you give the answers at the end of the answers like you know it will tell you as per the OASP guidelines what is the right ASVS level you should go with now once you have de determined you know what is the application risk level and what is the ASVS level the next part is you want to configure or integrate ESVS into your SDLC because as we already saw like you know it uncovers issue at the dev environment instead of waiting at the production or waiting at the staging environment and it reduces a lot of overhead now ESVS transition is very easy because if you are going through any security testing right now so let's assume you are going through the top 10 or sense top 25 testing going through asvs is not difficult so for example if your application if you have took the quiz and uh, it says okay your asvs uh, like application risk is high or medium and you should go with level two or three then what you can do is uh, i do remember like you know there was one client they said okay our application risk came out very high and we have to go with the asvs level three but right now we do not have enough resources or we are not feeling confident that we want to go with this asvs 
so what we did instead is we started with the ESVS level one because that's the most basic and it covers most of the top 10 requirements. So they, they were feeling confident. Okay, if, since we have done a lot of top 10 testing, we will be good with the ASVS level one. So after getting to the level one, we slowly migrated from level one to level three. And again, we did the same process. Like, you know, this time they only had to worry about these additional requirements presented by the level two because they were on, already compliant with the level one. So once we got the level two, then we migrated to level three. So it's not like you have to start with the level three directly because it, it feels overwhelming and I totally get it. So you can always start small and then gradually you can move on to the next ESVS level. Now, once you've gone through this ESVS you know, assessment, it, it's gonna provide you tremendous you know, value on improving this, your security posture or, or like the complete architecture of your application. Because as we have seen, like, you know, top 10 is good, but since last couple of years, as industry and web has evolved, vulnerabilities are not limited to web-based programming languages. And it, it's become very much necessary to test all the components and go beyond the traditional testing. Right now, many, like, there are so many applications which have mobile components and, and they're going through the web services, they are going to the cloud environment. So, you know, uh, top 10 is good, but it's not sufficient. Like, you know, we have to move away and go beyond the traditional testing. And and other reason is top 10 gets updated every four years. If you remember the top 10 last version was 2013 and the new version came, like the next version came in, in 2017, late December. So that was four years. And in four years, there was a lot of technology changes done in the uh, application industry. Now what, and that's the reason OWASP has brought this new standard called ESVS and they're making frequent updates. They are making, uh, I guess, uh, every six months they are making an update to make sure the, the framework remains current and you know it can be consumed by everyone. So just to sum it up, like, you know, ESVS is applicable to all the applications irrespective of their size data or like, you know, what kind of data they store process, but it provides all sorts of flexibility that you can easily transition from your current testing framework to the ESVS and provide like, you know, easy to follow action items using the testing guide and also the framework itself. Uh, with that, I, I think I, I covered everything that I wanted to cover as an introductory to the ASVS and, and why is it differ, like better than the OWASP top 10. At this point, I would like to answer any questions you may have. All right, well, thank you, Bamik. Uh, there are some questions in the hopper and we'll just, uh, we'll get started right from the beginning. Um, so uh, the first question is, uh, what is the right stage to introduce the ASVS? uh right stage uh, so the ES, yes, so you know just think about asvs as an a uh, part of your uh, live like it's it's very live framework so it's not like you integrate the start of the sdlc and then you forget about it you have to keep doing this all over again so let's say you you are developing a new system then first you want to start with the security architecture review that's one of the security function now once the application is built uh, and you're making changes, you are developing a new user stories, then you want to go back, assess the risk of any change, and then figure out what threats we have, what are the security controls we need. And based on the security control requirement, you want to see, okay, which is the right security function I can take from the ASVS. If you are building a new cryptography algorithm, if you're making changes to the uh, like, you know, encryption in your application, there is, there is an ASVS function seven, which talks about how to implement secure uh, encryption. So you want to like, you know, uh, go like there, there is, uh, it might not make sense right now, but if you, once you read through the ASVS framework, it's very easy to follow based on the changes you make in your application. Gosh, thanks Bamek. All right, th this next one is a, a, a little challenging for, for me to understand, but you, you might get it. So, uh, so ASVS is, is being proposed as a requirements framework. However, it is difficult to use in a requirements phase as BA 
will find it will find difficult to use it. Is that a, I'm not sure if that's enough information for you, Bowman, but let me know. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, sorry, Jeremy, can you repeat the question one more time? Sure thing. ASVS is being proposed as a requirements framework. However, it is difficult to use in a requirements phase as BA will find it difficult to use. Uh, so it, it really depends, like, you know, uh, so in the in the requirement phase, it's it's not very difficult. So because you can break it down into manageable chunks. As I said, like, you know, if there is a new requirement and you want to assess like what could be the risk of these requirements, it can be easily or probably you might already be doing this thing because the business analysts like you know they go through the requirement and then when it comes to the user stories like you know when it come to the application owners they are the one who who determines okay what are the risk levels and what are the possible threats with those changes so when you are determining these changes and threats you can easily evaluate what are the asvs uh, components i can integrate into my application and even though if you like, you know, if you want to keep your process simple and, and you want to keep your process as is right now, but then you want to make sure at the before going to the production or at least once in a while, like, you know, at least once in an annual cycle, you want to go through the entire ASVS assessment. And it's not just focusing on the threat modeling, but it tests everything like you know, it tests your authentication, authorization, logging, monitoring and everything. So it's not difficult, probably first time, if you're if you're but if you are going through the top 10 it's it's not that uh difficult or it's not very different it's just that the asvs is more organized so you know you get the checklist like okay whether i'm complying with this requirement or not so there are 120 requirements uh, in opposed to top 10 requirements so like you know and then you get the easy to follow action items because you can always refer back to the testing guide gotcha Thanks, Bamak. Uh, someone actually asked if they could also be a part of the Slack channel that you mentioned, and uh, if, if you could advise how to join, um, that that would be awesome. Well, yeah, absolutely. So uh, if you, uh, I'm not sure, but if it's a public, like I I'm part of the OWASP ASVS and also the OWASP community because I do a lot of open source projects as well and support the OWASP. And also I'm working on the actually current mapping between the top 10 ASVS because that's been a major requirement by many industry right now because they are dealing with the top 10, but they are saying, you know, we are not seeing consistent results across the board. So we want to, we want to go with the ASVS, but first we want to see if you can create one more level uh, with the uh, ASVS. So, uh, and that's why I, I, I was invited, but I guess if you if you look it up on the OWASP and, and you know provide your uh, information on the OWASP contact form, they, they should be able to create, like you know guide you and send you a request on on the Slack channel. Okay, perfect. Um, another question that came in: uh, Do you uh, so do you know uh, globally which customers are seriously adopting ASVS? Uh, are you are, are you seeing it as worldwide? Is it just in a particular portion of the uh, of the uh, no, world. no. Yeah. So, so you know, as as, as we saw in the earlier side, like it, it can be consumed by any industry. And and right now, I have seen many industries. So recently, like you no, know, we have worked with the uh, a really big uh, bank. Like they wanted to adopt the ASVS. So we started with the ASVS assessment recently with them. And then we have also worked with a technology company. Then we also recently did one for like you know the healthcare and the mobile application like they were it was mainly a mobile applications but because top 10 was not sufficient for the mobile application testing we adopted an ESVS for their mobile application so I have seen like you know increased popularity of the ESVS right now and and I'm sure like you know it's gonna evolve and evolve because top 10 is not sufficient and, and un, uh, protect again all the software risk we have at this moment. Gotcha. Okay, um, there, there is one more question around uh, getting in contact with Bamek. Um, I'll make sure uh, uh, to, to reach out to you directly right after this, um, uh, who asked the question and, and we'll make sure to get you guys in touch. Um, that being said, if anyone has any additional follow-up questions, um, you, know, you can you can email us at um, uh, info at pivotpointsecurity.com. 